Before cigarettes and even cigars, there was an era of smoking that still has a lasting impact today. Many of us have seen a pipe, or at least know what one is. The pipe was an art form, a way of expressing one's place in society. But for some, that place was at the very bottom, where they had to mold and make a way to survive. The Civil War was a hard time for this country. And while many men were off fighting in the war, the government required any potters to stay behind to produce goods that were in extremely high demand, particularly the vessels that would be used in camps, hospitals, or on the battlefield. Born in 1850 to David Hartso, Sylvanus Hartso has his work in many collections still to this day. But a particular piece of his, dating back to the 1860s, reminds us not only of the struggles faced when trying to create during the war, but also of the cultural invaluability of social behaviors. Even uh, uh, the Egyptians had pops, intricate pops that they carved out and even made uh, bronze castings to make those, those pops. Pipes have for centuries been seen as a way to bridge culture and nature. Indigenous peoples were commonly documented as using pipes in their religious practices and during 17th century England, tobacco was smoked in clay pipes. The combination of these two cultures in the New World led to a whole new Southern pottery tradition. As far as pipe molds are concerned, some were made out of lead, some were made out of wood, and then here at Salem they also made some out of uh, plaster. Um, some I, I believe were probably also brass. Traditional Catawba Valley pottery uses clay directly from local sources. The process to prepare clay was simple but tedious. After being dug from a pit and softened with water, clay would be churned in a simple beam mill rotated by a mule. Then the clay would be picked to remove any sticks, rocks, or weeds, and then needed to remove air pockets. A lot of factors went into choosing the right clay for a project, such as plasticity and elasticity. But when it came time to make a pipe, Hartso would simply fill the bowl mold with clay, plug the holes where the tobacco and stem would be placed, and squeeze it tight in the press. They used um, metal pipe molds that were used with a pipe press, and then they also used plaster molds that they pressed the clay into to form the pipes. During the hard times of the Civil War, being anything less than high on the socioeconomic ladder was devastating. Pottery began as a way for farmers to make extra money, and when everyone saw the usefulness of a watertight slip glaze or a rock-solid stoneware piece, pottery became the main source of utilitarian objects in the South. Even pipes were made to be simplistic tools of function. The farther you got away from money, the, the less intricate they become and the more useful they were. They just become useful. They were what they were, where in the city or around money there would be a status symbol like a cane. Uh, they, would, they would keep their pipe in their mouth all the time uh, as a status symbol and they would carry their cane all the time whether they needed it or not. Where if they didn't have intricacy or it wasn't very, didn't cost a lot of money, it was just a pipe to smoke. The importance and prevalence of pottery in our southern culture has molded a history full of clay and hard work. Just like Hartso, many have depended on the craft to get them through trying times, such as the life of those living below the pottery line.